not sure I can do anything. Then. All right. Well, Sister Pew, um, I'm going to pin your pin your screen and I'm going to pass it over to you once again. Thank you so much for for agreeing to do this and looking forward to uh, looking forward to what you have. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor. It's an honor to be uh, greeting you all today. We love Westchester Church. It's got a special place in our heart, I think. And um, we pray for y'all, uh, pray for y'all often, often. Um, so we love y'all. I think it's awesome uh, how y'all start and begin the year off with this. Uh, so uh, let's just get right to it. Um, what I, where I felt to direct today was the Lord's Prayer, um, Matthew 6. It's one most of y'all could quote, um, but let's read it today together. But when you pray, Matthew 6 and 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So. Um, I, I just in prayer and thinking um, of, of what to say today, I, I felt to focus on four words from this prayer, um, the mindset, the posture, the conviction and the importance that these four words carry. Uh, it must be fully emphasized and embraced in our prayer time. And that is thy will be done. Um you know, so many times it's, it's easy for us to, to get focused on our problems. Um, when we pray, we pray to God and we say, I need you to fix this, God. I need you to intervene in this situation. And I need you to do it this way, this way right here. I've already, um, you know, in our own fleshly wisdom, we look at, at all, every scenario um, we've laid out, you know, everything. And we've kind of created this, um, this map, this roadmap for God to follow. And, you know, we project those I ideas onto our prayer and say, God, I need you to do it this way. Um, maybe sometimes we offer a half-hearted, you know, but your will be done, God. Um, or maybe we just leave it out altogether. Um, so it's, it's something that um, this, this concept of that will be done. It's something simple, but it's also complex. Um, in fact, I was talking to my husband and I said, I feel like this is so elementary, but so many times I think um, the simple things can be the hard things. Um, those are, you know, those are the hard things that sometimes we overlook because they are so simple. And, um, and so I just wanted to bring our attention today to that. Um, the full weight that those words carry, you know, what those words mean, what it costs. Um, the level of trust that it requires. Um, it's one that I myself, you know, I understood, I misunderstood it for a season in my life. I thought, you know, I kind of justified the way that I was praying um, as, as though I'm boldly coming to him, you know, you know, the scripture and everything and prayer and supplication, you know, bring your request to God. So I've, you know, I've kind of misunderstood it and justified it as I'm just boldly telling God what I need him to do, you know, I need this to happen. Um, but if we leave out that crucial, if thy will be done, it's, I can tell you, it can lead to frustration, anxiety, um, stress, fear, you know, a breakdown, even in our relationship with God. Um, just, just to name a few things. So I just wanted us to stop and think about it this morning. So what is the right way to pray? You know, that's something that the disciples, they asked, they asked Jesus, they come to him and they say, teach us to pray. Um, so what is the correct posture? What, what should the attitude of my heart be? Um, if prayer could be effectual, well, then it can be ineffectual, right? Um, so I don't, I don't want my words to be vain repetition, repetition. Um, you know, I don't want it to be ineffectual. Um, what is the state of my faith? You know, what level of trust and surrender 
am I truly offering to God? Am I boldly coming to him, you know, to make my request known? Or am I boldly putting him in a, in a corner with, with all these demands that I have of how certain situations should be handled? You know, I've, I've already figured it out for you, God. I've, I've made it easy for you. And, you know, I need this desired outcome. Um, what will my response be? You know, what will my response be? And how do I reconcile if, if he doesn't answer my petition, you know? Um, or if it's not in the manner that I requested, am, am I truly, when we pray, am I truly ignoring that will be done? Thus setting myself up for frustration, bitterness, you know? Um, so, so it lends itself to asking how, how, how do you, when we pray, should we pray for specific needs or for God's will that will be done? And the answer is yes to both, <laughs> to both. Um, so maybe today, maybe today, you know, you're you're here, you're sick, y you are dealing with affliction. You you need a desperate touch from God. You need God to intervene in this situation. You've struggled with. Maybe it's something you've prayed for a long time. Maybe maybe you have you know a prodigal, uh, a son or daughter. It's something you've poured pr so many prayers into, and you you're wondering, should I even just continue to pray for this? Um, or should I just accept that, you know, this is God's will and move on? We should certainly pray for specific things, make our, you know, re re repetition, you know, petition again and again to God that, you know, that he meet our need. Um, so that, that is a simplistic answer, but, and while it's a true statement, it doesn't really deal with the complexity, get to the complexity of what that actually means. So. To, to kind of give clarity on this, I, you know, I'm, I'm brought to um, Matthew 26, where we see Jesus praying again, you know, so again, looking to him as, as the great teacher of prayer, he was the greatest prayer that ever lived. And if we want to know how to pray, I, you know, it, we can look to no better example than to him. So in Matthew 26, we see Jesus wrestling with this very thing, this very thing that we're talking about. You know, he's in Jerusalem. Um, he's with his disciples for the Passover. Uh, it's the final week of his life. And within a day, Jesus is going to be handed over by one of his very own disciples. So dealing with hurt, you know, dealing with, um, you know, the greatest betrayal. Um, he's going to be crucified. All the the turmoil and the, and the, you know, the pain that he knows he's about to endure. And that's the thing. He knows it. You know, he knows it when he goes to pray, he knows this. So with all that in mind, let's, let's kind of look at this prayer and see what we can gather from this. So Matthew 26 and 36, uh, Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him, Peter and um, the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is, soul is very sorrowful, even to the point of death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and he prayed. So the first thing that we can learn from Jesus' prayer is that it flowed from experience. It, it, pray, it flowed from the emotional state that he was in. Um, and that's the deal. All authentic prayer, it should begin there. Begin there. Um, you can't begin anywhere else. You know, Jesus, he, it says in there that he's sorrowful to the point of death. So in Luke's account um, of this very moment, he writes that he prayed in agony and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And as a result, Jesus fell on his face and prayed. So he's praying to God, you know, all that's in, in his heart, everything that he's he's feeling. Um, he brought all, all his anguish, his pain, his fear, everything. And he prayed to God. And, and that's so important, you know, prayer, it must begin with our experience, where we're at, what our need is, you know, um, it's, it's the foundation for an authentic relationship and communication to happen. And, and that's what prayer is, right? You know, that's what prayer is. It's forcing first and foremost, it's about relationship. Um, 
so many times I think, you know, we might be afraid to pray about something um, It's that's in our heart. Maybe we feel shame about it. Maybe we feel like this is too petty or, you know, it's not even worthy of uttering a prayer. It's too silly. Um, but here's the deal. God already knows it. You know, um, he already knows what's in our hearts. Um, there's no point pretending like he doesn't. You know, we read this at the very beginning of um, in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 7 and 8, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. So we don't we're not praying to God, you know, the things that he didn't already know. You know, he's he's already fully aware of what's bothering us. We're praying. The whole point is to commune with him and to appeal to a loving God who wants us to bring our every need and our every worry to him and lay it before him. So what did Jesus pray for in the garden that night? He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. This is Matthew 26 and 39. So not only does Jesus pray for something very specific, it's something that's very bold, extremely bold. Um, as I mentioned before, we've already established the fact that Jesus knew. He knew why he was there. He knew what was about to happen. Um, and early in his, you know, he, he tells his disciples, you know that two days after the Passover is coming and the son of man will be delivered up to be crucified. So it's, you know, if we think about it, it's kind of puzzling um, why he would pray for something like that. Are, are we getting a glimpse of a, of a very authentic and raw, um, the vulnerable flesh, you know, um, you know, hoping and holding on to some sort of hope that redemption could come another way or, or, or is he praying this prayer to, for the sake of all of us, as an example, you know, that follow him either way. Um, the one thing that we can learn from this is that it's okay. It's okay to pray for specific outcomes, even big ones, bold prayers that seem impossible. Um, if we really trust God, you know, and we're willing to surrender our will to him, we'll cast every anxiety, every worry on him because we know that's where it belongs. Um, you know, maybe something's weighing on, on you today. Uh, maybe a relationship that's in your life, it's strained, you know, maybe even to the point of breaking, you know, and you're desperate. Pray about that. Um, maybe you're under spiritual attack. Pray about that. Um, perhaps there's a job opportunity, you know, that, um, that's, that you're really looking at and you, it seems perfect for you. Pray about that. Do you, you know, are you, do you need a miraculous healing today? Pray about that. Um, the thing we gather though here is Jesus prayer. It didn't it simply end with that request of what, you know, our petition, um, his petition, he ended it in his prayer in full was my father, if it possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So he's, you know, he's reiterating thy will be done. You know, he, he's fully revealed what's in his heart, the state, the state that he's in, but he recognizes that if his will differs from that of, of the father, the father's will takes precedence over that. So again, correlating that with, with the Lord's prayer from Matthew seven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the right kind of prayer, it has a passion for God's glory, his agenda, and his name and his kingdom will always be top priority. So in this moment, Jesus displays full trust and surrender. Um, and that's the only way he could pray a prayer like that. Um, he was honest, he was vulnerable, uh, you know, but he placed it, he placed it in the hands of the father, you know, that he would truly take care of them, him. And, um, it, it couldn't have been easy to say, nevertheless, you know, nevertheless, thy will be done. Um, and it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's not easy for us to sometimes when we feel so passionate about something, we feel like, you know, we need this desperately um, to pray that um, at the most difficult times in our lives. And the question, it begs to be asked, whose will do you trust? You know, do you trust yours or do you trust his? Um, the thing is, you know, he doesn't exist to just give us what we want. Um, I read this quote um, and I saved it in my phone because I wanted to always be able to refer back to it. Our heavenly father has no interest in making his supernatural power 
accessible to our every whims and every request. His goal is for us to know him in a relationship founded and dependent on faith. And that, that just, you know, that, that brings to light and uh, makes me think of Proverbs three, five, and six, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So, you know, lean not to your own heart. We don't know. We don't have the full picture. We don't, we think we know, you know, but we don't. Um, and as we're praying this, as we're praying, you know, your will be done in my life, God, it can be prayed in different moods and ways. You may find yourself kind of just saying it with resentment or frustration, you know, do your will, God. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, <laughs> um, your will wins. And so I, I may not like it, but do your will. Or, you know, we can pray it with a heart of perfect love and trust, you know, and we say, just do your will, God, because I know it's best. I know it's best for my life. I know it's best. Um, change me where I don't understand, where I don't see and help me to accept your will, you know? And here's the amazing thing that when we pray this way, if you look back, Jesus prays three times in the garden. That first one we just went over, but his second and his third, they're slightly different. There's a subtle shift um, where before it was, if it's possible, let, let this cut pass for me. It becomes my father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. So it's a very slight, subtle shift, but it's important because as he's praying, he starts, his will starts to become aligned with God's will. And, you know, and that's what happens, you know, as our relationship and our prayer life develops and matures, you see how your heart and your will starts to shift from our own immaturity, our own lack of wisdom into shifting into God your heart. What do you want? What do you see? It starts to align with his will. So this prayer, it's very, you know, it's so, it's in, so instructive for us. Um, and I think the, the thing that was critical for me and, and just what spoke to me was he prayed for something that he didn't get. Have you thought about that? Jesus prayed for something that he didn't get. Um, you know, we've heard so many faith sermons um, so many, you know, scriptures in the Bible that talk about the effective effectiveness of prayer. Um, we're told to ask, you know, in Jesus name with faith and he'll do it, you know, um, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find knock and it will be given to you. And, you know, the, the prayers of a, of a righteous person is powerful and ineffectual. <coughs> These are wonderful promises and they're true. <coughs> Excuse me. But if we read them without also keeping in mind <coughs> Jesus' prayer here in the garden, we can become dis discouraged and disheartened, <coughs> frustrated. We might be, you know, begin to believe a lie that if, if only we had more faith. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get some water. <coughs> Pause one second. <coughs> Okay, so if we read those scriptures without the context of Jesus' prayer in the garden where he prayed for something and it didn't happen, you know, we, we can beat ourselves up and believe a lie that it's, it's my faith. My faith is only weak. Maybe he doesn't even hear me. Maybe he's not even for me. But I just want to encourage you today. You know, Jesus, the most righteous, he asked for something and he didn't get it. And um, just as I'm as I'm closing my thought today, um, there was a situation in my own life a few years back where I did this very thing. I, I you know, I put God in a box and I prayed for a desired outcome in a, in a specific situation. My prayers, uh, they were dominated with God. If you don't do it this way, then catastrophic damage will occur. That's what's going to happen. I, you know, I, I created and ran through every possible scenario of what would happen if he didn't intervene and if he didn't do it in this way. And in my own feeble understanding, I created a plan of action <clears throat> for God. <coughs> I 
I needed him to intervene. And I made, I made my request known very passionately, but I didn't leave a whole lot of room for his complete and total will to be done in the situation. It, and, and what it did was it set me up for anxiety, frustration, um, feeling like he's not working. He's not hearing my prayers. Um, you know, as you know, it created a whole lot of unnecessary fear. Uh, it affected my peace, my health. So fast forward, I can remember the moment. It's a very vivid moment where as I looked the thing in the face of the thing that I prayed against and I saw the situation, how it had unfolded and it wasn't what I originally prayed for, but I thanked God for not answering my prayer. You know, really demands really um, what I thought was going to harm and destroy. It turned into a tremendous blessing and something of beauty and a help and something for my good. <laughs> and so what I learned, you know, through that process, it's okay to pray prayers of request, you know, um, he, he wants us, he wants us to come authentically and, and lay everything at his feet and expose our vulnerability. But we must reconcile that confidence with that, with confidence in him, knowing that his will is best and it's, it's got to be completed in my life. And we cannot see the whole picture and his ways are indeed above our ways. And let that be your prayer, your will, God, not mine, not mine, your will be done, God, in my life. So I just want to encourage you as you pray to fully embrace that part. This is what I need, God, but you know what's best. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Pew. I wonder if we can just close out the this last couple minutes and and let's let that be our prayer. Amen. Um, one thing that kept coming to my my mind, Sister Pew, was we make we make Thy will a verb and not a noun. It's like that will be done. That will be done. That will be done when it's supposed to be a noun. It's like whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's pray that today. Let's pray that that whether we beyond our understanding that God's will be that will be done. Why don't we why don't we pray, Westchester Church? Why don't we connect with God this morning? Why don't we connect to His will? Lord, I love you, Jesus, and I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, for always hearing us, God, for giving us the opportunity, God, to touch your throne. God, I thank you, Father, God. for Help us, Lord, um, the understand. opportunity, God, God to Lord even Jesus. hear from you, Jesus, that Bring the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Lord, God, would step down me. and be with us, Jesus. Help us, God. Feeble humans, us, God, Lord, those that Lord, don't have it all together, God, those that are weak, Lord, those Lord, that, Jesus, that become Jesus, sick, Lord. those that that have uh, have shortcomings, Enough God, but yet you still want to hear from us. You Jesus still want to you still God. want to commune with us, God. You still want to hear from your people, God. I thank you for that, God. We don't deserve such kindness and such oh, love, God. God, and yet you know everything, God, about us. You know help every us. hair on our head, God. You know everything Just that we deal with, every trial, every struggle, every tribulation. God, and you also see our end oh, from our God. beginning, God. Be an authentic and we give you complete control in our life, God. <laughs> God, to do oh, what Jesus you will. Man. God, to have your perfect will be done in our lives, God. Help us to pray, God. Help us to, oh, to Jesus, connect with your will, it. Jesus. Help us to be content in all things, God. Help us to understand, God, that there is a bigger purpose and a bigger plan in our life than what we can see in our current moment, what we can plan out in our future, and God, Jesus, that you have, our, have a perfect will in, our, in store for us, Jesus. God, and as you prayed, God, thy will be done Jesus, on man. earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in your plan for us, not our own. God, God and that we can pray, God, and we can we can petition and we can ask, God. But at the end of the day, we are content and we will be satisfied, God, with your will to be done. God, if this is the cup, God, that you've given us to drink, God, help us, Father, to be content. Help us, God, to give us strength. God, to move past, God, our weakness, to move past our doubt, God, and to put our trust and our hope and our faith 
in you who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, God, that you sit above everything. God, and you have a perfect plan and sin and will for our life. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises, God. Thank you, Father, for everything that you've done for us. God, and we will put our trust in you. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff, Sister Pew. Thank you so much again for sharing your heart this morning. A timely word and something that we can all um, we can all use and pick up and and implement in our life. Amen. Westchester Church, don't let this just be a um, another message, another sermon. Let it be a seed that that's planted that that you cultivate, and you water, you grow, you utilize, and you. Um, apply to your life because it'll change it'll change the way you pray amen amen awesome well thank you all for joining tonight um